Hi there, Kelly Brockman for Nickelodeon's um, documentary produced by my friend Bilal. Okay, so he has given me a bunch of questions and I'm going to answer them as best as I can. All right, number one, how did you get your start working for Nickelodeon? Well, kind of straight. I started off um, summer job as a tour guide at Universal Studios Florida when it was first opened. They actually had a studio tour, believe it or not, that would go around the studio and we would have to do a lot of stalling because there wasn't really much to talk about. But uh, part of that was going to Nickelodeon and I actually got to be one of the original tour guides for the Nickelodeon at the time. On my way out of work one day, they were having auditions for Game Lab. And so I said, ah, oh, what the heck, why don't I just stop in and see what happens? So I went in and I got the job. And ever since then, I, I worked for Nickelodeon. And it, it was uh, the audition that changed my life. And I love that I got to be a part of something so magnificent. What was your first impression of Nickelodeon Studios when you got there? Well, like I said, when I first started off, I was a tour guide. So we actually got to go through the studio. And, you know, the thing about Nickelodeon, when you walked up, and you saw the big green slime geyser going off and then the colorful walls and you went up that escalator got to the top and you were able to look down on the sound stage and see actual productions going on it was really cool i was i was in my 20s at the time i thought it was like the coolest thing to be able to kind of sit there and and peek into nickelodeon and see what was going on and we also got to go into the control room and then we would go into the next sound stage and then downstairs into the GAC kitchen where you got to see makeup and, uh, of course, taste the booger GAC, which everybody always loved to do. And then eventually they added Game Lab into that, and that's when we started the Game Lab. So my first impression was just fun, pure fun. I was like, this is a really cool job. I get to have a lot of fun going behind the scenes, seeing things go on. Okay, what was your typical day like being there? Well, usually we would have to do nine show shifts. We would do nine shows in a row. Um, there was two characters in the Game Lab show. There was the host, and then there was uh, the character called the LA2. And then, of course, the lab assistants. Um, the host and the LA2, we interchanged parts. So we would do first part of the day, as lab assistant two and the second part of the day as a host. So if I was LA two, which really, truth be known, I, it was my favorite thing to do. I would just get in my jeans, my Converse high tops, pop on my Nickelodeon shirt and just get out there and load the audience in and, and just play, literally play, 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 back to back to back to back to back. Um, you, after working for so many years there, doing so many shows, you got to work with different hosts. So. My shows, say with like Brian Stinson, would be much different from my shows from Eric Foster versus Sean Halter. So like when I was working with Sean Halter, he, he loved to be the host. So me and him pretty much most of the time worked together. Um, so we kind of had this, we, we could complete each other's sentences. Our shows were just, they were just a lot of fun and literally... I never knew what was going to happen, and, and we kept each other on our toes. We just, you know, I was constantly the lab assistant, too, and he was the host. So the thing I loved about this show was just the unpredictability. You never knew what was going to happen. And Sean, who was hosting a lot of times, he knew how to play to get exactly what he needed to get from the kids. And the kids really were the show. Which is the, you know, the great thing is you learn how to make the kids the stars. Because we, we were just, you know, the, the people who brought the fun, but the kids brought the funny. And they, they brought the magic. Okay. Um, what do you remember the most about the studio tour and how Game Lab was one of the highlights for visitors there? Well, I kind of went over the studio tour, but... Um, it was cool. They actually just did a video recently uh, on um, Facebook. This Black did it, and uh, it was like talking about the '90s tour, which was my life. You know, that was that was my gig in the '90s. That's what I did. That was my job, and um, I actually am. If you ever watched that video, I am the purple blazer lady with the microphone. 
so you'll see me. But that brought to light, really, just how magic that tour was. It really was. I, I didn't realize that at the time. At the time, it was just a fun job, and all my friends were there. We, we had a great time. All of us hung out together, did things together. We were, we were seriously like, I say this, but it's true. We were like a big family. We had our fights. We had our, you know, we, we loved each other, but we would get on each other's nerves. So we had a good time. Um, was there a particular show that you loved visiting the set of? You know, honestly, uh, I don't, I know Clarissa explains it always there for a long time. So we got to see that. Um, Hi Honey, I'm Home was a lot of fun too. I really liked Roundhouse. That was a lot of fun to kind of see because they would do the singing and the dancing and stuff like that. And then they had that whole kind of cool set. But, it was, you know, all the sets were really cool. Especially um, the game shows, too. Guts. Guts was fun watching the, the different sets that they would put up. And, you know, I can't really say one particular show that I liked the set the most of. Because there was just so many. They did such a good job with building those shows. And, and you know, each one was targeting a different type of thing for a different type of kid, you know, you had your game shows, you had your Clarissa Explains It All, you know, you had Gullah Gullah Island there for a while, which was a lot of fun. So, as a game, lo game lab host, how do you make sure to pick out the best group of people to do the game challenges and then the kid who gets slimed in the end? Well, that was never the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, you'd go in, Every kid who entered that place wanted to be slimed. And you knew that. You could only pick one kid. Um, I usually looked for really enthusiastic kids. And truth be told, you know, I didn't necessarily, you know, you would think you want, oh, okay, you want to pick the cutest kid, you want to pick this, this the other. I'd pick the, the normal kid, the kid who was just like, I could tell was a true Nick fan, who really wanted to be a part of the action whether they were short, tall, fat, skinny, black, white, Asian, whatever. I didn't care as long as I saw the smile on their face and that they really wanted to be a part of it. You know, that being said, too, I had to turn down a lot of kids in my day from getting picked. And that's never easy because, you know, it means the world to them to be a part of it. There were also many occasions parents would be pulling their kid's arm up and the kid be pulling their arm down. So... I stayed away from those kids because I knew they probably didn't want to be on stage as much as their parents wanted them to be on stage. But I definitely appreciated the parents' spunk and uh, enthusiasm for trying to get their kid up there. Um, have you ever been slimed yourself? Yes, I have. I got slimed my last day working the Game Lab show. And uh, it was kind of a rite of passage for all of us game, game show hosts and lab assistants at the Game Lab on your last day you get slimed. So I got to get slimed and it was really gross, but cool. Really cool. Did you have a favorite ride at Universal Studios Florida? Um, honestly, you know what? I don't really think I had a favorite ride. I enjoyed, I enjoyed going on Kong. I enjoyed the Jaws ride. Um, Universal Studios Florida, when I was there, they didn't have a, they were, they, they say the comparison is Universal Studios Hollywood was a movie studio they built a theme park around. Universal Studios Florida was a theme park they tried to build a uh, movie studio around. So there wasn't a lot of rides there in the day. They had like King Kong and Jaws and Earthquake. So... I guess Earthquake was kind of fun, but wasn't really a lot of rides to choose from at the time. Um, you also got to be an audience warm-up for the show You to You, and you pick live tour. What's the best part about having a live studio audience? Um, yeah, I did do a, a brief stint. I, I did one You to You show. The You Pick Live Tour, I actually was a co-host. I played the character of Gwen which was this just kind of outrageous, zany character. And 
I loved that show. Oh my God, did I love that show. We got to travel the country doing that show and it was like a kitty concert. You would go out, it was, you would go out and just feed off the energy of the audience and you would give it out to them, they'd give it back to you, you'd be screaming, you'd be cheering, you'd be waving your hands, they'd be going crazy, you'd run through the crowd, who wants to play? And everybody would be raising their hand and you just grab kids, get up there, go, go. And, and with each kid you picked, you knew you were making one dream come true. You're like, yes, you know? And you'd see the kids get up there and just, that's when the magic happened. That's when the live show stuff happened. That's when you got to really play on your feet and play off these kids. And lots of times you'd kind of learn, okay, if this happens, I'm going to try this. Or you, you got a groove going. But yeah, the kids and the energy of the live show, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it in the world. It's, it's the best. As a Florida native, how great was it to have all the TV and film production in Orlando, and why do you think it has since decreased? You know, that was an interesting question. Um, I, I was a Florida native, and, you know, I've, I've always had the theater bug in my jeans growing up, so I was thrilled when Universal Studios Hollywood, I mean, Florida, was coming out there. I was like, yes, this is my chance. This is my big break. Um, and I did, I did work there for many years and with Nickelodeon, and, and I just loved it. I think, though, living in L.A. and living in Florida, comparing the two, they're two different worlds. And I think that the intention was good for Universal Studios Florida, but the industry is really in Hollywood, and that's where everything happens. So I think they... They gave it a shot, but as far as like the production went, they really wanted to be where it's all happening in LA. That's that's my best guess. I, I don't know, but it seemed like everybody was kind of moving back to LA. The Carolinas were getting lots at the day, and the day a lot of stuff was going on in the Carolinas as well. But everybody had big dreams that Florida was going to be Hollywood East, and it, it just never quite happened. I think, though, the Nickelodeon Studios really had a good thing going on there because people would come there and get to see the shows happening. So it was it was a pretty neat thing that they had going on. Um, how great was all the staff who worked at Nick? I always hear positive stories that well. You know, everybody who works at Nick was like a big kid. And it was just a lot of fun. We just I'm, I'm still friends with them to this day. You know, we keep in touch with each other on Facebook, this, that, the other. But, yeah, everybody was great. Bob Brandenburg, he was um, one of my, the guy who brought me into Game Lab. And uh, I, call, I always call him, like, my mentor. And he's just, like, a, he's just a big kid. And really taught me a lot and gave me the opportunity to really, you know, shine and do what I love to do. And that was, you know, have fun, make people laugh, and especially kids. I love kids. I've always, I've always had a, a special way with the kids, and I loved being a part of, Playing with kids. My my twenties and thirties, I got to play. That was that was my that was my job. Playing. Favorite behind the scenes memory. <laughs> Gosh, there's so many. Okay, so in the spirit of Nickelodeon, I'll tell you this one. Uh, we were doing shows one day, and that particular day, I had a really bad bout of gas. All right. So I said, okay, you know what? I'm just going to not fight it. I'm going to go to the kid bleachers if I feel that I need to toot. So I went over to the kids bleachers, did what I needed to do, and walked over and let the kids blame each other. That was my strategy the whole day for my nine shows. I was working with Joe Swanberg that day. So my little strategy was going pretty well. I was like, yeah, this is actually, this is going pretty good. Nobody's on to me. So I'm sitting in the break room feeling pretty proud of myself. And my co-host Joe Swanberg comes in and he goes, whoa, somebody's dropping a bunch of bombs out there. Sorry, busted. <laughs> Poor kids had no chance, but... Uh, my little ploy, my little gas ploy didn't quite work out as I'd hoped. That darn Joe Swanberg calling me out. Um, 
but we did lots of fun stuff. We would we would hand out business cards. You know, we'd start off with a business card, and whoever ended up with the business card at the end of the show was a loser. So, like, we would hand it off to a kid, say, hey, hand this over to Sean when Sean comes to talk to you. And so Sean would get it, and then he'd hand it off to um, a lab assistant, and a lab assistant would hand it off to another lab assistant. And by the end of the show, whoever ended up with the business card was the loser. So we, we found all kinds of fun things to entertain ourselves and make each other laugh. Um... Do you think your experience there became beneficial process in the work you do now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I I actually started my own entertainment company um, where I'm actually doing a show called the Betty Bingo Show, which is a lot of fun. And she's uh, just this outrageous, wacky character. And I, I do a lot of similar things that I got to do with Nickelodeon. I get to perform in front of a live audience, you know, in this outrageous character with a big pink wig, very Nickelodeon style type of show I do, uh, but it's, you know, singing and dancing and stuff like that. So yeah, my, my experience working with Nickelodeon totally helped me to do what I do now. How do you feel knowing that Nickelodeon in the 90s made such a positive impact on fans and is still loved today? You know, that's, that's something that I was talking about the Splat video earlier. And how I was reading all the comments about, you know, this, they say, they said, uh, the, the Splat thing said, hey, there's nothing like the 90s studio tour for bringing back retro 90s. And I started reading comments of people and, you know, different people that had gone to the shows, different people that, you know, never got to go, but always wanted to go. And it was like really cool to think, you know, yeah, I was part of that. I, I got to be a part of something really unique that... You know, who knows if it will ever come around again. I hope it does. But um, for the 90s and being a part of it, it was just magic. It was awesome. Um, I think about how many photo albums I must be in throughout the country with all the pictures we would take after every show. And, you know, back then it was video cameras. People had their video cameras, VCR tapes. <laughs> a, few, a few celebrities came out of the show too, oops, was uh, Wayne Brady, worked with Wayne, Cheryl Hines, they moved on, so we launched a lot of great careers. What do you think made Nick Studios Florida so great and so special? Well, it's it, we used to say it's a place where Nick is made. So for kids to get to come and see where their favorite shows made and actually get to see their stars performing in their favorite show, and then jump into a game show like the one they watch on TV, it was awesome. What, where do you get that experience these days, you know? And just for the fact of these kids getting to really be a part of their favorite TV station, you know, their cable network, it was really cool. Cool for Nickelodeon too, because they got to bring the kids in to see where everything was made. You know, you used to see that green slime guys are going up. They've actually got that time capsule still there too. I wonder what happened with that. I wonder if they're ever gonna open that. I'd be interested to see what, what happens if they ever open that. Would you like to see it be reopened? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I'd love to, I'd love to be, I have a son now, he's nine. I'd love to be able to take him there to, to see stuff like I got to do. Uh, he, he has a, you know, vague, vague idea of what I do from, like, pictures he sees of me doing stuff. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's sad to think. I, I saw the video of somebody put around a video they snuck in to the abandoned uh, studio tour. And it was really kind of surreal. It's really kind of sad because that place was always full of so much life and energy and fun. And just seeing it uh, abandoned. It's sad. So I hope it comes back. I hope it comes back bigger than ever. And Bilal, thank you for leading the charge in trying to bring Nick to a whole new generation. All right. We'll see you later. Bye.